we are back to our notebook and ready to integrate RoboFlow, as we saw in the URL pasted above here. You can either text and type in the information that is highlighted in red, which is your API key, your project, your version, or as I mentioned before, we can copy and paste. Here, I've pasted in all the information I need and it's automatically in the same format. Once I click run, it's going to take a few seconds to gather, pull that data and really access RoboFlow's you know, software and API. So what we can do at this moment, it'll probably take some time, sit back, relax and get ready to run the rest of the code. And just moments later, we're back. It took about, one minute to run as you can see from the code above and from my timer so that is a pretty quick step again our data set is a little bit smaller than average so the larger the data set the longer it'll take uh, but we can progress all right so we've integrated roboflow we've set up our environments we are ready to do the most important things of this whole machine learning and that is train our model woo -woo. so i'm excited i hope you're excited this is where it can get interesting. We have here a simple line of code, Python train pi with different numbers for image sizes, batch sizes, and epics. Um, epics are the amount of times you're going to tell the machine to practice learning. The higher the number, the more the accuracy becomes. There are some extenuating circumstances where this is not the case, but most of the time, more epics, which as you can see from this line of code here, means that it's going to be getting more and more experiences, just like we as humans do. More and more experience, more and more understanding, better accuracy. Um, image size and batch size are some other things. Um, feel free to investigate those on your own. For the purposes of this training, we're going to stick with the YOLO predetermined image and batch size. Um, YOLO v5 it can be run a number of times. Not all algorithms though can be run in this manner. So this code is specific to YOLO v5. It is not specific to others. And that's why you always have to consider what type of machine learning algorithm you're using and what are all the nuances that go into it. As you can see from this custom notebook, we have just a few things located like image batch and epics. When I hit this play button, it will take time to run. Now, sometimes if you change the image size or you tweak the epics, it might take longer, it might take shorter. Batch size is the number of images it's being trained on at a time. So in one epic, it'll train 16 images. You could have the image size be larger. You could have more images trained in an epic and you could have more epics overall. Those three things will determine how long it takes to train. However, a note of caution, training a machine learning algorithm is hard, it's complex, and it does take time. But even if it takes a lot of time to train, you now have a rapidly deployable model. So we must really balance accuracy, we must really balance speed, all considering what is it for and what is it doing. And for damage detection, it means a lot. When we train this model and hit play in this line of code, what it's going to do is find the weights of what a destroyed home is, find the weights of what a non-destroyed home is, and really evaluate based on all of that information to be used in the future. So in the case we just want to do speed and get the notebook over with, then we might sacrifice determining whether someone's home is damaged. And that means a lot. And as urban planners and researchers, we really must consider all of the implications. To learn more about social biases and how machine, machine learning really works at a deeper level, please check out links below. Social bias is crazy, it is intense, but we have the ability to control it. Let's give it a whirl and see what happens when we hit play. I will be back when this is over. Three to go. Long way till we're there. <laughs> 